Peace, y'all. This is your boy, Iru, the Any Star, host of the Dianix Podcast. Yeah, man. Got you this morning. Just give me this afternoon now doing a little podcast. We're going to be talking about uh, none other than the forgotten one, associate head coach Johnny Bryant. So this is a name that um, that has been brought, brought back to my attention uh, due to something that was posted by the Knicks, man. So uh, we'll get in all, all into that. But, um, you know, of course, we got to do an intro. This is Dianix Podcast, Iru, the Any Star. Let's go. Yeah, man. So uh, the Knicks posted um, this, man. They posted the training camp roster. Uh, you know, you can just scroll it down. There's a lot of players on there, about 20 some 20 players, whatever. Uh, of course, you see Tom Thibodeau. Uh, you also see the other guys too, Aaron Greer, you know, Larry Greer, you forget about those guys, Darren Erwin, you forgot about him, uh, Mike Woodson and um, Kenny Payne. Kenny Payne is the star of the show. But uh, one name that you do notice there is uh, Johnny Bryant. Uh, he said it says associate head coach. It doesn't say assistant coach. It says associate head coach. There's also another name there, but we also talk about that. As I go along here, but um, we're talking about a guy that's named associate head coach. That means that he's second in command. Uh, you know, this is not uh, uh, what's the guy? Um, uh, Keith Smart. You know that that Fisdale had. This is uh, a guy. You know, this is just look at him. Look at his eyes, man. That is a crazy looking dude. You know, look look at the eyes. That is a coach right there. That's um somebody that's um that's gonna be on the, in the same. It looks like he's cut from the same cloth as as a um Tom Thibodeau. And, um, you know, I don't know who, who um, you know, initially uh, signed him. I don't know if this was part of Tom Thibodeau's deal when he became the um, the head coach. Or maybe this is something that, uh, you know, uh, you know, some of the other guys, um, Scott Perry or maybe even Leon Rose or somebody like that. Um, Walter Perrin is another one. He's, he's They got him from, from Utah. So maybe they had these discussions and they said, yo, we need to get Johnny here. You know, Johnny is ready, ready to go. I don't know who's um who's actually uh you know in charge of that or who made that decision, but collectively, you know, it was a collective decision because um, you know, Knicks fans love drama. You know, when you when they hire somebody, say, like, oh, there, there could be some beef. But I'm surprised somebody made that connection. You know, so you know, I know I said that, so I hope nobody uh bites that idea and start running with something, you know, like oh, yo, there's gonna be a beef if the if the um Thibodeau doesn't do well, then they're gonna fire him and move the real guy they wanted, Johnny, Johnny um Brian. I hope they don't flip it like that. But the thing is he he's only like what? Uh, what is he? Uh, th- uh, thirty-five. Is he thirty? Is that thirty-five? He's only thirty-five. He's a baby, but um, somehow he he got to where he is, where he's like second in command to none other than Tom Thibodeau, one of the most like um sought after or just uh, well-respected coaches of this era right now. So um, let's uh let's get into it. Who is uh Johnny Bryan? And where the hell did he come from? Like I said, he's only thirty-five. He's born in nineteen eighty-five. Uh, you know, let's let's um do it. What what do people do when uh when they um when they can't find something? They Google it, right? So yo, let's um let's get into some Googling, guys. So we're gonna pull up none other than the most accurate um uh place to get information, Wikipedia. Yeah, so we're gonna go here, and it's not not really big. The reference is already there. Uh, right there, he was born August 6, nineteen eighty five. Uh, you know, like I said, he's only 35 years old, uh, associated associate head coach for, of the New York Knicks. It says it right there. Um, uh, he played college basketball in University of Utah. OK, we'll get to that. But, um, you know, as far as his um, playing, playing career, we'll talk about that, too. But as far as his coaching career, uh, he started at the Bryan Sports Academy. So that's like a skills development um, thing. So he started off as a skills development coach. It doesn't say what year that is. But um, he was hired by the, um, the by the Jazz as a player development coach uh, in what, in 2012. And he was promoted two years later to assistant um, coach under um, Quinn Snyder, who is a good coach. There, there he goes there. You know, Quinn Snyder is a, a good coach, good college coach, came in and came into the NBA. And he's been, um, you know, kind of underrated in the way that he um, manages games and stuff. Uh, yeah, but, um, you know, he was hired by uh, by Quinn Snyder. So, I mean, I mean, this is only like what well, from 2012. So you're talking about uh, what, eight, nine years now that he's been uh, associated with the NBA as a first as a ve- developmental assistant. And then, like, what the last uh, six years as the uh, assistant coach under um, Quinn Snyder. So, I mean, that's that's a long t- um, tenure in the NBA. So, um, he, he got the respect of of, uh, of his peers more than likely because um, the NBA is a coaching circle, and um, guys, you know, get the mixing and talking with each other and stuff like that. So, you know, he's known. So, I'm, Tom Thibodeau is. I'm quite sure he's very familiar with him. Uh, Walter Perry is very respected around the league too. So, you know, I'm quite sure all these guys had these conversations, especially before they were they were hired. 
you know, so this is just interesting to, to, to look at that. And, um, you know, somehow 2020 is, he's the associate head coach of the other Knicks. So anyway, let, let's, um, let's get into, um, you know, the, you know, the past, right? So, because, um, before you, you can get um, somewhere, you have to start from somewhere, right? So, um, let's, uh, let's do, let's do another sheen, uh, screen share here. We're going to bring up, uh, his actual college stats because he did play college basketball. Here he is. Here, Johnny Bryant. He um, he, where's the the for the for the career? He aver- actually averaged 14 points a game for his career. Two rebounds, two assists. This is the college game. So anyway, these are his stats here. So um, these are his per game stats. Uh, you can take a look at that, man. We got um, like uh, you know, I'm, I'm big on points per game. You know that 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 just tells you right there that he's that he's able to um to score. So he topped off at 15 um, points a game, uh, you know, bottomed out 13. So, for, like I said, 14.1 points a game for his career for a three-year career at um, Utah. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's good to be, not- it's, you know, to be noted that um, he started off at a community college. He actually was in, um, uh, I believe, an Oakland um, community college and then – or maybe a Utah. I, I don't know exactly, but um, he, that, that's how he, um, he got to, to this point where he, um, he actually redshirted for them and then he was able to play. That's why you only see three years there. Uh, you know, decent player if he if he could score that, and he played for the University of Utah. So U- University of Utah is um usually um uh, decent teams uh, during that time. Let's check it out. The uh, first year he was there. Uh, you know they had a, a you know sub five hundred record. Uh, go to the next season. Come on, guys. Uh, you know sub five hundred again. The last season he actually uh, was able to get a winning record. Played under Jim Boylan. So that's that's another coaching um, coach there that um, that's worth noting too. He, he had um, good coaching uh, throughout his short career because, like I said, he's only 35 years old. Um, you know, and he has some skills, so I'm quite sure he had NBA aspirations. But uh, you know, he he was um, relatively old when um, when he left um, school because you know the whole redshirting thing and stuff. So he did three years. So he, so we're talking about early 20s. You know, so he he got into uh, like I said um, training. He got into training guys. And um, you know, somehow he, he caught the eye of of um the Utah um organization. So I mean, you know, it's something that that um, is interesting to me because no one's really talking about it. Like I said, uh, you know, uh we talk about Calipari more than anything. You know, we got Kenny Payne. Kenny Payne is, is in everyone's mouth. They they keep asking um, you know, the players about about that, and, and the players keep saying Kenny Payne, but nobody's really saying Johnny Bryan. He's kind of like like kind of like just um talked about a little bit. But I mean, associate head coach, he's second in command. Uh, let's um, take a look at um, at his coaching um, thing. What was uh, what was his record as an assistant coach? One thing I forgot to queue up here is um, is uh, like this video of him. But I, I guess I can do it a different way. But um, you know, 2014 uh, through the through the 20. Let's, let's look at Utah's record during this time. So I mean, sub on 500 for the first um, year that he was there. Uh, it starts to go up. Now it's 51, um, you know, 51 games, uh, 48 games and um, 50 games. So, I mean, like he, he's had he's been around a, a winning culture. You know, he had a winning situation over there, you know, winning players and stuff like that. So he was a, a part of Walter Perrin's building the team. So, um, you know, he, he's uh, he's been around winning. He's, he's been around good, good players. Uh, he's been been um, around coaching. Uh, you know, successful players. So, um, you know, in the meantime, I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can pull up this video. Cause um, I actually posted a video on Instagram that I can't really, uh, can't really find at the moment, but um, we're just going to look up um, some stuff on, on, on YouTube. Cause it is on YouTube. Uh, some coaching tidbits of him, of um, Johnny Bryant uh, while he was um, coaching the um, Utah um, summer league. So uh, this is actually the first video that pops up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try not to um destroy the stream here with um <laughs> with a whole bunch of like you know extra turn this off and let's just get busy, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna share this this thing for you guys so you guys can see it. Uh this is Johnny Bryant mic'd up, uh doing a summer league for the for Utah Jazz. Let's um let's just play this. Uh make sure you guys can see it. So anyway, uh, let me let me see. I'll I'll just turn it on. See if you guys can hear this. He's kind of just directing traffic and stuff like that. I'll turn this down. You can hear him talking. 
you know, just giving guys cues, hands up, you know, telling guys where to go. You know, basic coaching stuff where where he's like telling guys what to do on defense and stuff. You see, like these little things here. I'm not sure if you guys can hear it, but these these little little tidbits that he's giving them, telling them catch and go. You know, little smart things, t- pulling, telling guys to come over, getting these are like sneaky timeouts where like the the team is um, actually um in play, dead ball, maybe shooting a free throw, and he's coming pulling guys in to um give them little tidbits and stuff like that. This is a heads up coach. This is a guy that, that we're gonna have on the sideline that's gonna help Tom Thibodeau. So while, while Tom Thibodeau's game managing, he's pulling guys to the side and giving them um secondary little comments and stuff. Look, look, get to the paint. Yeah, see, look, he's telling him to get to the paint, uh, get your free throws going, and um, then you can might get your offensive game going. These, these are little things that that I like, like um, like we talk about savvy players that do the dirty work, uh, guys that play defense and stuff like that. You got to have a coach that's, that that has the ability to to see things and give guys little pointers, let them know what they're what they're not seeing because they're playing the game, you know. And he's that's that's his job as an assistant coach. Like I said, it is amazing to me that he's only what thirty five years old. You know, 35 years old, he could, he could still be playing in the NBA if he played in the NBA. So I'm quite sure that, that he's out there probably with the guys playing and stuff. I just love his his mannerisms and his, just his um the, the, his ability to stay calm while another guy's pissed. Because he was just talking to a guy there where he was frustrated about um what was happening in the game. But, uh you know, Johnny Bryan is still able to keep the same energy no matter what what he says. And um that's just, that's just great to me, man. Yeah, I'm not sure if you guys can hear the audio on that video, but he's um yelling at um Deontay uh to uh to talk on defense. You know, so talking on defense is very important, man. Team building and stuff like that. So um it's um very important to um for, for us because we're we're starting from the bottom. We need guys that, that are gonna be uh vocal and um you know communicating stuff like that. So like that's why it kills me when guys get so mad. Oh, the Knicks need to play the young guys, they need to play the kids and stuff like that. But um the kids don't know how to play, you know. Uh, you got the coaches and stuff like that. They're going to teach them whatever. But people are only talking about, uh, oh, teach them how to shoot. You know, teach them how to how to do this, how to do that, how to how to shoot the corner three. You know, teach them. That's not that's not the only thing that's about coaching. You got to teach guys nuances of the game. You got to teach guys, um, you know, where to be um, after a screen, where to be when the, when the ball's not in their hands. You know, uh, what what's going on 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 um, you know, if, if they're missing something, if they're playing and they're not doing something, you need coaches to 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 be able to do that. But if the coaches are, are doing their job, the players also, the veteran leaders have to be out there yelling and screaming too, because the coaches can't be yelling at the sideline; they're not playing. You know, sometimes you can't hear the coaches. Like if you ever played in whatever in a, in a packed arena or just arena with just enough people, small arena with a bunch of crazy ass uh, fans on the side yelling and cursing and screaming at you, uh, you can't really hear the coach half the time unless the coach is yelling and screaming. You know, you know, like a crazy person. Well, a lot of times you really don't hear the coach until till, till you get pulled to the sideline. So you need the players on the court to be able to um, communicate and stuff like that. So how do they learn to, to do that? Uh, of course, in practice, but you need guys out there in the mix of things to um, to get guys um, organized, you know, to get to um, help guys out. You know, that, that also uh, works in practice. You got to get guys in practice going. But, um, you know, it's very important to have this connection with all these different things. But And, you know, it's not always about the young guys. You can't just throw them out there and tell them to figure it out because that's just not how it works. You know, even um um calling next uh, on a, on a court, um some courts you can't just get on. You know, like like if guys are playing basketball, these guys look like they might be um uh I, I won't even say semi pro. They might look like they they just know how to play. Bunch of older guys, stronger, whatever. Uh, these guys look like they might be two hundred. You know, you know, definitely like over um uh, one fifty. You know, one eighty. You know, 200, 220 pound guys, big men. And some some kid coming out of the park that's one hundred fifteen pounds, not just gonna call next and get in. You know, they're not just gonna play them. Oh, yo, you're young, so let, let's let's take it easy on you. You know, let, let me let me let's let's keep you out here so you can develop. So over four years, like like you can play with us and learn how to. That's just not how. That's just not how life works, man. You know, uh, you know, keep it simple. Like a, a lot of us are not professional basketball coaches, right? But we all know what basketball is. We all have been into been into a situation where you call next or someone calls next and they pick you up or whatever. So I mean, like uh, you're just not gonna pick a, pick a dude that um that's like a novice and never played before. You got, you want to win. Everybody wants to win. We're not here to train people. If you want to um train, there's a, another court on the side with the broken rim that no one's playing on with all all the weeds and, and um the glass on it. That's the that's the court that you, that you um that you get better in. Go find you a broom, sweep that glass up, and uh, work on the game on your on your own. You know, so like while the guys that are ready to play, you know um they're there ready to play. 
you know, and if and if you're gonna play in a tournament style style um situation or or a professional style situation, then you have the coaches where they, where they work on you on one on one and stuff. But if you don't have that, or just just in you in the off season, who you, you're gonna rely on just just your your main teams um coaches to teach you? You got to do something, man. You know, you you out there on your own, you have to get better. So anyway, I don't, I don't want to get sidetracked, man. But this is um this is uh you know uh Johnny Bryant. I just want to highlight him because nobody's really talking about him, man. He's like um. He's only 35, man. He's the associate head coach of, of the Knicks. So um, this is this is going to be our coaching tree, man. So uh, Tom Thibodeau himself is only like 62 years old. So um, he's not going to give up, obviously. But we're talking about um, somebody 62. Uh, when he gets to the end of his contract, what does he have? A five-year contract? I'm not exactly sure. But at five years, 62, what is that? You know, uh, 67? So we're talking about a guy that's 67 is still going to be uh, at the top of his game coaching. No, we got a guy that's 35 years old that um that in five years he'll be 40. You know what I'm saying? So um a 40 year old with all this NBA uh, basketball experience, a uh, young guy that can relate to the players that are out there. And by the time he gets to 40, he'll be the uh, he'll be the OG. Uh, you know, guys call me OG. You know, uh, a lot of people don't really under, don't really think they really don't know how old I am, whatever. But people starting to call me OG, whatever. But um when you, when you get to the to the to that age, you the OG, you do have some experience, you have some knowledge and stuff. So this is somebody that I'm looking for. You know, if everything works good, man, you know, because I mean, like we're, we're building a roster. If, if guys start getting better and we keep accumulating players and stuff and we, we keep getting better in five years, hopefully this is churning. Hopefully this is something that's churning. That's something that we're waiting for two or three players to finally get it. Hopefully we, we were adding guys and signing guys and training for guys or whatever. And we just keep this train moving and it's not going to just end with Tom Thibodeau. Uh, a guy like, um, you know, Johnny Bryan is going to be right there to um to continue this um this train. Man, I love his intensity, man. Like one thing I want to I want to point out with this is this that um the way that the way that he um approaches um t- coaching, his um his voice is like this, like that. He's never high, never low. Even if he's yelling at guys, talking whatever, he's still same temperament. You know, you got you got to be able to coach. Th- that's my coaching style. You got to be able to to coach a guy and keep and keep yourself calm because they're upset. So you can't um I'll come come at them yelling and screaming. I, I watched tournaments in the summertime. Like um this one one guy. I don't want to say his name. But he was a guy that they used to play for Cincinnati, New York City point guard. <laughs> I mean, I basically said his name, but um, you know, he was out there cursing, um, cursing the kids out after the game. And during the game, he's cursing out, pacing back and forth, throwing stuff. And then after the game, I just happened to be sitting there because I was just kind of just watching. And um, while while the other um teams are getting ready to play, uh, he's on the sideline cursing this team out. I mean, that's not that's just not how you how you coach. That's not the the right way to um to teach a kid yelling and screaming like that. You know, you know, some you know, yelling and screaming to push guys. In order, in order to um get them focused, but that's not the only way to coach, man. You need you need to, uh, to be able to get your um your um, point across without cursing kids out, you know. And you know this the NBA is younger now. We got guys that coming into the league that are um you know 18, 19 y- years old. Uh, you know they're still kids themselves, but you know uh, I say this all the time. There's an olive branch. You have to extend uh you know the olive branch from from the old to the new. So as a as a grown man, quote unquote OG, right? I can't have this persona. You know, uh, be be out of control, and I it got the, got the nerve to be um you know, teaching someone else how to be a man, or teaching another um pl- person how to be a professional. When you yourself are, are just not a professional, you know. So uh, you know, kudos to Johnny Bryan. He's only thirty five, man. So um, you know, he already got it. I looked a little bit up up um you know his little um personal stuff too. He's married, has a beautiful wife. Uh, you know, so it's it's a uh, it's great to great to see, man. You know, I hope you can see this um this video. And uh, be encouraged, man. That um, there's some Nick fans out there, you know, uh, appreciate uh, where you come from, and y- you know that uh, we're glad to to have you here, and we hope that we can have you here for the long run. Like I said, and keep this thing turning. It's not only about this year; it's about the next five. When we had Patrick Ewing, we had 13 straight years in the playoffs, man. Um, uh, Ewing was here for 15 years, and 13 out of the 15 years we were in the playoffs. So I, w- I would love to get that again, another another 13 year, maybe even forever. Uh, just keep churning out playoff runs, you know what I'm saying, and um, just keep it moving, man. Keep the same, um, you know, principles, the same um, thing um, involved, and have these guys churning. Uh, yo, shout out to the front office. We got Walter Perry's older man, Scott Perry's older man as well. But um, you know, shout out to the guys that we that we pulled up, that we um, snatched from OKC, from um, Cleveland. Um, all these different young guys, you know, they're gonna be the next guys too. As soon as um, Walter Perry and uh, and um, Walter Perrin. Um, Scott Perry and um, um, you know Leon Rose and all these guys. As soon as they get old, these hopefully these guys will start to come up and fill these spots, and they can continue to bring other their other people up as well. And like I said, it's all about turning this thing. 
turning this thing. It's not all. It's not only about three players, man. You know, the three players that 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 that, that people like to argue with about all day on uh, on Twitter. You know, that I had like a freaking um, you know, fight over the weekend on on Twitter with these guys about these three players. And um, uh, you know, I see I see guys on um, you know, all over YouTube, um, you know, arguing about um, you know, these same three players too, man. It's not about that, man. This it's just we got to keep this thing turning. It's about winning basketball. Everyone's talking about loser stuff. Lo only losers talk about losers. You know, we need to talk about building this team, man. So, you know, I love I love um on what the Knicks are doing with that. But um, you know, let's let's move this along. I want to add another guy. There's somebody I didn't I didn't actually make a a, a banner for. So I'll, I'll just take it off, man. So, uh, you know, this this is a guy that um was handpicked by uh, Tom Thibodeau himself, and um that's um this guy, uh das uh, das <laughs> Uh, Yodomoto, whatever. I'm not really good at um, at names and stuff like that. But you, you see the guy; he's a goofy dude, man. But um, but look, he's another young guy. Um, like I said, I didn't really look too much into him as far as um, you know, his background and stuff like that. But he's a young guy too, and he's somebody that was handpicked by Tom Thibodeau. Uh, he reminds me of a of a Spolstra, you know, uh, Jeff Van Gundy, that type of guy that that um that came out of nowhere that that the coaches just pull him in, a uh, video coordinator. You know, or whatever the fuck they that they, they, you want to call these guys now. These guys started here, and um, somehow uh, Jeff Van Gunny that that looks like um, you know, like like somebody just dragged them out of the rain. Uh, you know, and um, his brother, you know, the, 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 um, somebody somehow they, they got pulled into these coaching trees, and these guys are still you know making a lot of money playing um, you know, coaching and talking about basketball up until this day. You know what I'm saying? I think had to wet the palate, man. But yeah, man. So uh, you know, the Knicks are on the right path. We got a, we got a guy, uh, my man. You know, I, I hate to mess up people's names. You know, eventually, I'm quite sure he's going to be uh, right there, uh, probably as um, associate uh, head coach one day himself, or maybe even he might um, supplant uh, Johnny Bryan as the head coach one day. You never know. Stranger things have happened in the NBA, but it doesn't matter. Just as long as the as the Knicks keep churning, man. We got to keep on churning out these wins and stuff. So anyway. As you see, I'm, I'm kind of quarter, color coordinating today. I got I always got my die hard Knicks hat usually, uh, but I got this um this Knicks on um, training um jersey, man. You, are you hating or what? I was I was trying to get the blue one or the gray one, you know, because I see the guys wearing it in practice. But the black one is kind of dope, man, and I felt like it was made for me because it matches my my uh, my normal hat, uh, you know, perfectly, man. So yeah, man, this is um this is just uh, uh my hat tip to Johnny Bryant. Also, uh, hat tip to Yogamoto. You know, I, I'm sorry I, if I'm mispronouncing your name. No disrespect. I have a lot of respect for you guys. You know what I'm saying? I, I, like I said, I'll get to learn his name as time goes on. But, um, you know, while we're here, you know, let's take a look at these um, this, uh, stats, and um, these um, chats. Uh, we'll do um, Sportscaster first. We got um, Norm Core. We got um, uh, Leanne Wa. We got uh, Fabulous D. Pause. Uh, he sent a tip for 10, for 10 tickets. Thank you for the tip. Uh, so that's on Sportscaster. Thank you guys for tuning in. Sportscaster's cool. Uh, also, we're on YouTube too, man. So let's check out YouTube. Now, there's a lot of stuff, uh, <laughs> a lot of comments here on YouTube. Uh, we got, uh, I see um, Kodak Vlogs is here. Uh, you know, I, I don't want, I don't want to talk badly about other shows, man. Knicks, Knicks fan TV is all about getting smoked now. They're the top dog. Uh, you know, they're getting all the interviews. Um, they, they, they have a great show. You know, CP is dope. Uh, you know, and um, you know, they, they have a, have a dope show. Not a lot of nice conversations and stuff there, but they're becoming the big dogs, man. So I, I made I made a post um, on Instagram. Also, on, uh, actually, it was on um, on Twitter, but um, you know I reposted on Instagram stuff like that, where it's just um, saying that um, you know uh, uh, we don't need the media anymore. We don't need the traditional beat writers and stuff like that because they're sitting on Zoom now or whatever, however they're doing it behind a screen, waiting waiting to ask uh, questions that 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 um, we don't necessarily want to know the answers to, but they're trying to um, write papers. So they're, they're kind of like drowning because they don't have the traditional sense where they can communicate with guys or enter the facility and get close to guys because of COVID. You know, so these guys are floundering. They don't know what to write. You know, um, you know, meanwhile, us Knicks fans, we talk about the Knicks all day long. So we always got something to say, you know, because we actually love the Knicks. Uh, these beat writers, they um, they they get um, what do you call um, they just learn to hate the Knicks, you know, because they just following the losing for all the years. It, be, it, be, it makes a miserable existence and they have a job. They have a job to do. And um, like just like anything, if you if you had a job for 15 years, like um, Berman, I think he's been been writing for the Knicks for like 25 years. Uh, so the other jackass that um, they used to be with Daily News, he was writing for about the same amount of time. Uh, you know, so you know these guys develop um hate 
you know, a hateful relationship towards the Knicks. And, um, you know, as a fan, you never like like a fans do that as well. But, um, you know, you, you, know, you got to find the guys that are that are that are still positive, still trying to put out good, good content and stuff like that. So um, Knicks fan TV, they, they've been they're putting out great content and you're going to start getting um comments about, you know, th them putting out BS narratives and stuff like that because they're the top dogs. People are talking to them now. So once soon as you start getting um information, you're going to give it out and that's going to get backlash, man. So shout out to them, man. I fucking like what they're doing. Uh, Bodega Wi-Fi, he was on um, tuning in last time. <laughs> yeah, fake news. Yeah, you know, I just you know I just talked about that. Well, um, you know, this uh, he's talking about um Bryant here. This is Bodega Wi-Fi. I love the um <laughs> the avatar there, man. The avatar is dope. So um, let's just scroll down and see what else is here. We got uh <laughs> Payback Carter. He's always saying yo yo yo. All right, what's good? What's good, man? Thanks for tuning in. One of my one of my biggest supporters, and I, I know I, I recognize you from from um, Instagram and stuff like that. So shout out to you. Uh, again, um, Bodega's there. They're still talking about <laughs> the barbershop opinions and stuff like that. I'm reading the stuff, man. I'm trying to get through it. But uh, what else we got here? We got uh, Kodak is still here. Kodak vlogs. Uh, yeah, babysitting got to stop. Got to put that up there. Babysitting got to stop. Uh, you know, are we gonna win or not? That's a nice little little thing there. Got your, you got your earbuds there, looking looking um looking buff. You got to get one of these, man. Got to get one of these um practice shirts, man. So yeah, that's what it is. We got to stop babysitting. Um, these guys, you know, we can't wait four or five years for guys to get um get better. We were talking about that um on um Instagram before, not Instagram on Twitter before I got on here. We just talking about the way that um the um was it Instagram? No, no, it was actually my own little personal um thing. But anyway, we we're just talking about the way that talent comes in into the NBA. Talent comes into the NBA all the time. We just got Emmanuel quickly. Emmanuel quickly right now is already better than Frank has ever been. And he's never played a game. You know what I'm saying? I, these guys got to play games to show and prove it. But I bet you if you put, um, um, you know, Emmanuel quickly in there, he's going to give you five points, um, you know, three, three assists and two rebounds that Frank has been doing. It's not like Frank has been doing something immaculate. You know, um, th those those are not stats. that, uh, And plus the, the percentages are horrible. I know guys want to talk about the 80 something percent from, from the free throw line with the one attempt per game. And like the the hundred percent that he shoots from from the corner three, Alahan um put it perfectly, man. He's a he is always there with his hands on his hip because he don't want to be over there. You know what I'm saying? He don't want to be over there. You know he he's uncomfortable in the corner three. So anyway, anyway, he he does make it the stats do make the thing, but I mean the overall stats don't add up. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Uh, what else is here? We got Michael Keaton here, or uh, Cotton Dinosaurs. Yep, I don't know what you're talking about. But shout out to you. Uh, Payback is here. We got um, Ray. I can't pronounce your last name. My bad, man. Uh, do you think we should go for Buddy? Uh, Buddy's a good player, but I talked about him in, in the last um, show that he's a little miserable, man. Uh, you know, he, he's an interesting player. He got all the skills and stuff like that. But um, he has this thing on the court where he's just like, it doesn't seem like he's happy. Like like he enjoys to play, but he's one of those guys that when you get out there, like like the guy could play, but you don't ever want to play with him because the motherfucker's always pissed off and he, he's like, whatever. It's like, yo, man, what the fuck's wrong with you? You know, say so we're winning. You know that, right? Like, it's, you know, they, he's one of those type of guys, you know? So, you know, I don't know if that's going to be something that's going to be good for the mix, man. I, I could be wrong, you know? Uh, the Knicks definitely have uh, way too much, um, too much talent. Not good, not super great talent, but we have a lot of talent that we can just pull like three guys out and put them in a trade and still be good. You know, because it's not like we, we lost um, something that we didn't already have. Yeah, so that, that's something to um, to think about, too. Uh, <laughs> that was, yeah, we all we all we all talking about the same stuff, man. This is all, all great, great um, stuff to talk about, man. You know, the um, the, the Knicks, like, like I said, to be a Knicks fan is, is one of the, the best things to, to be, man. And especially with, with everything that's happening now um, with the with the NBA and just um COVID and everyone's getting sick. People are still getting sick. You know, I, I um one of my sisters actually um still got sick and she's like in, in her twenties still. She got sick pretty pretty bad, but she's good now. You know what I mean? So so people are still getting sick off this thing. People are still dying from it. Hospitals are getting full. You know, people are still panicking and stuff like that. People are still buying up all the toilet paper. So um you know you, you got to be very careful with, with all this stuff, man. And um just be just be thankful. Um uh, arguing all day long on on um on these social media platforms. Uh, you know, being negative and trying to bait people into arguments and stuff like that. You know, it's like, you know, it's, it is fun. It could be fun. I was having fun uh, when I was um, banging with those guys for like fucking 30 hours over the weekend. But, uh, you know, it, it could be tiring, man. You know, this is, um, you know, I feel like you, I feel like it's like a novella. Guys would rather watch a novella and, um, and um, you know, talk about, 
you know, what, what Poppy's saying to um to Abuela, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's kind of annoying as a, as a Knicks fan. Uh yeah, you could donate on, on Sportscaster. Uh who somebody wants to donate, you can donate on Sportscaster. You can give um money and stuff. You can also do that on, on YouTube too. It's up to you, man. I, I I like I like to donate when I when I go on other people's shows too. So um, you know, it, it is helpful, man, because you know, of course, um, you're doing it for free until you hit certain milestones and stuff like that, man. So while I'm here, man, I won't be able to edit this because this is live on YouTube and I'm li- also live on Sportscaster. Get out there, like, share, and subscribe, man. Um, on Sportscaster, you can find me Diary Knicks Podcast. Uh, YouTube, obviously, you guys are watching uh, Diary Knicks Podcast on, on YouTube. I'm also on um Instagram, you on YouTube or whatever, and I'm on my, I'm on my phone all day long, man. So like, if, if you want to hit me up on a DM. Or if you just want to like get engage me in the conversation, just um click one of my pictures or whatever. You might see me on your favorite um you know pages um you know commenting too. I I, I got time, you know what I'm saying. So I'm out there commenting and stuff like that, man. So anyway, this uh, episode was uh was definitely about uh you know Johnny Bryant and uh you know what I think about him, man. I hope you guys can hear the YouTube video that that was playing. You know it was it was a little bit loud in my ears, but I'm not sure if it, it um, broadcasted on your end. Um, yeah, and so um, yeah, I, I tried to give a little in, little insight from from what I was seeing, and um, you know, it's it's, it's just great, man. Uh, yeah, and this guy too, um, uh, Yoshimoto, uh, you know, he, he's a, he's another guy to look out for in the future, man. So, uh, shout out to everybody that's been that's been chiming in and stuff. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm starting to change the things that are that are going on. Um, you know, behind me, I just added another camera. Uh, and stuff. So I'm, I'm going to be just uh, messing around with, with different things, man. So, you know, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for supporting and uh, continue to watch, man. Dianix Podcast, it's your boy Evo the Star. Four fingers to the forehead, tucking your thumbs. Salute. That's what you do when you see a diehard, man. So I salute everybody that's in the chat. Everybody's over there, sportscaster. Thank you for tuning in. And um, that's it. Peace. See you guys in the next one.